Hello and welcome to today's demo. I will be showing how to create a basic primary flight display using GL Studio Safety Critical. The first thing I'm going to want to do is create a new project. To do that, I click here and I will select this PFD starter bundle from the list of project bundles. This contains some default art assets and other content uh, that will be needed to create this demo. Once I do so, the, the project starter will be extracted and I'll be presented with this project. So to create my PFD, I'm going to import some art assets from an existing source, in this case, Photoshop. GL Studio's art asset pipeline consists of what we call catalyzer objects. And catalyzer objects are essentially Python scripts, a group of objects that are governed by a Python script. In this case, the layers from a Photoshop file. So if I click and drag this ADI ladder Photoshop file onto GL Studio, what will happen is that PSD catalyzer will kick into gear and it will parse all the layers from the Photoshop file and it will create this content you see before you. So over here in the geometry tab, we can expand this and see that all the different layers from the Photoshop file were all imported as different GL Studio objects, some as polygon and some as text. The beauty of the catalyzer workflow is that um, not only can you import art assets from these sources, but you can also go back to the original source, make changes, and have those changes be automatically re-imported into GL Studio. So I just clicked on that magnifying glass to open up the Photoshop file I imported. And now here in Photoshop, I can make changes to my Photoshop file. So for example, I want to reveal the center tick marks and the center indicator, and I want to hide the ground and sky because we're going to do our own thing in GL Studio. So now that I've made these changes in Photoshop, I'll go ahead and drag this down so you can see what happens in GL Studio when I save. So when I save that Photoshop file, you can see that, boom, immediately the content is re-imported into GL Studio and reflects the changes that I just made. So this is now the content I have in GL Studio. So I'll go ahead and drag this group to the center, and we'll go ahead and see what our project looks like right now when we try to run it. So here I'm going to hit the Run button, and what's going to happen here is the Safety Critical Deployment is going to generate a Visual Studio project for me since I'm on Windows, and then it's going to generate all of the source code associated with this design, and then compile all of that source code into an application, which you can see now running, and it's just the static content that we imported from the Photoshop file. Iteration using our deployment system is very quick. And to show an example of that, I'm just going to change the background color to blue to represent the sky and hit run again. And as soon as I do that, it's going to regenerate the code with the change I just made, which is changing the background color to blue. And now you can see very quickly that we already have the running application again with the change I just made. So some further changes we can make. Um, I want to add a clipping region in here so that we don't see the entire uh, so that we don't see the entire tape because on a primary flight display you never will get to see the entire tape. So over in my toolbox, I'm going to add this to a clipping group as soon as I can find where that is, and I just did. So now I'm going to clip this content off, and I can switch to vertex mode here to adjust that region. And I think plus or minus 30 degrees is going to be good. So let's adjust to get that nice and snug. And then the next thing I'm going to want to do is actually make the PFD move. And we can do that by writing code in GL Studio that exercises the various properties of our scene. So I'm going to switch over to the code browser and code editor. And here in the code browser, we have some existing properties that were part of this that were part of this project. These properties in the code browser are the public interface that you can write um, between GL Studio and the data that you want to receive from outside. So in this case, we have pitch and roll. And you can see inside this code, we just have a little bit of code. And all it does is it passes the pitch value to the translation of the translate group. In other words, it will move the group up or down depending on what value gets passed into here. 
And essentially, that's how you write code against GL Studio objects. Um, every object that's here in this code, like rotate group, is present in the geometry. So every, whatever this is called here in the geometry tab, you can reference all of those objects by name here when you're writing code against those objects. And I'm also going to uncomment this code that feeds some ramping values into pitch and roll. So it's just a sinusoidal ramp. Uh, between negative 60 and 60 degrees so that we can test and see that pitch and roll are working as we expect. So now that I've done that, I'm going to hit run again. It's going to recompile my code with that user code uncommented, and now you can see that the tape is moving up and down accordingly, and it is also rotating. GL Studio is also fully capable of doing 3D content. So I just switched to perspective mode here in the 3D canvas, and you can see although right now all of our content is 2D, uh, GL Studio is indeed actually rendering it in 3D. So all content in GL Studio is actually being rendered in 3D, whether it's you know 2D or 3D. So to demonstrate this in the context of this project, I'm going to add a ring so that we can show a highway in the sky, uh, a ring that the pilot can fly toward um, and assist for the pilot. So to do that, I'm going to add some new geometry by adding an ellipse. And I'm going to configure it to be a ring. So I want to make it filled. I want to set the fill color to amber. I want to make it no longer solid. And we can make it a little bit smaller. So this is the object that we're going to render in 3D. And to do that, I'm going to apply a behavior to this object. And I'm going to do that by clicking on this little Browse button, and it will show all the different behaviors that are present in this project. So in GL Studio parlance, a behavior is a templated C++ header file that you can use to apply reusable code um, onto many objects in your project. So in this particular example, I have this perspective group behavior, and what it's going to do is it's going to render everything inside of it in a perspective projection instead of the default orthographic projection. So as the ring moves farther away from the camera, it will appear smaller. And as it gets closer, it will appear bigger. Another cool thing about behaviors, you may have noticed that this new checkbox appeared in the Object Properties tab. Uh, behaviors allow you to add your own custom properties to the object properties, and this lets you configure these objects without having to write any code against these objects. And then to show the, the perspective group in action, I'm going to uncomment this code. And what it's going to do is it's going to cycle between negative 300 and 300 units. It's going to move the ellipse back and forth toward and away from the camera. So now when I run the project, it will regenerate my code again, including the ellipse that I just added. And it will also recompile all of the code that I just uncommented. So now you can see we have some 3D content because we have the ellipse moving forward and back. And you can see as it gets bigger and smaller. And we also have the existing PFD content we had before. This content's a little bit off center. So as one more example of iteration, let's go ahead and center everything. So our window is 1024 by 768. So let's set our locations for our content to 512 by 512 384, which is the middle. There you go, everything is centered. Let's give that another run. And there you have it. Everything's centered, everything looks great. So that's the demo. So to recap, we have our project workflow which allows you to bundle default content like art assets and code, which you then use to create new projects. When you create your project, you will use our art pipeline, the Catalyzer workflow, to import content from various sources like Photoshop, Figma, or 3D Studio Max. Then from there, as you arrange your content in the geometry tab, you'll use our deployment system to generate C++ code containing all the geometry and code in your project to run it as a Windows application on Windows or, in, or your embedded system. We also support 3D 
perspective content, as you saw in the ring. And that content was made possible through a custom behavior that manually does some manual OpenGL to change the perspective from orthographic to perspective. Thank you for your time.